it uh, literally to the streets. We've taken it to the streets. <laughs> Hi. That looks like a very warm jacket, by the way. It's okay. It's so, good. It's all right? Yeah. Um, Thank you. Right on. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, uh, when we were chatting earlier, we touched on Karl Rove, we touched on politics a little bit. Uh, oh, and you yes, recently uh, called out Sarah Palin. Not yes, only for, for wanting to uh, repeal Roe v. Wade, but yep. also uh, for her stance on animal cruelty. Yes. Um, I, don't, I don't agree with her politics, is all. And I, and I, I know that a lot of girls out there um, connect with me, and I thought it was my responsibility to let them know that that's not the feminist thing to do. It's just... <laughs> I find it's interesting, though, the way the world has kind of reacted to her, but as well how Americans are reacting. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, I, I'm not really exactly sure where the polls are right now. I'm just praying for a miracle. Did you kind of follow the, the uh, you know, the, the Democratic nominations? I did. I, um, I, follow, I watched every debate between him and Hillary. Um, I watched the Democratic uh, convention. I thought his speech was very inspiring. Mm -hmm. One of the things that was really interesting to me, kind of watching the whole Democratic National Convention and, and the nomination process was the media talked a lot about um, the way a lot of men and the way the media itself kind of look at women who have something to say, women who kind of, you know, are outspoken. And I kind of wonder whether you equated maybe when you first started out being really outspoken, I think it maybe caught a lot of people off guard. Your second record was called Misunderstood in the way mm -hmm. maybe a lot of people were caught off guard by Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, anytime that you have, uh, there's definitely a double standard in, in all of life, but I think it's gotten better. I think that there's a lot of amazing women CEOs, and I think it's changed a lot. I think we have a long way to go. Um, with Hillary, I felt that she was definitely ganged up on a little bit, um, and maybe not so much judged for her politics or experience, but for her sex and for her family. Um, it's unfortunate. I think the best person should get the job at this point. Thank you. What was your process of, uh, of I mean, coming out uh, in terms of uh, your career? When you first came out, you were being lumped in with, you know, the Britneys and the Christinas of the world, and you seemed to not necessarily resent them, but you seemed to kind of resent that. I don't like being compared to anything. I don't like boxes. I don't like labels. I don't like um, having to be any one sort of thing. I think we're all really, really unique and colorful and different and uh, one within one person is like five people between morning and night I just I don't think there's a box that any of us fit in and I'm not getting in one as you should I'm not. talk about uh, the interest in PETA how did that first start with PETA yeah you're interested in PETA I'm just all for animals. Mm -hmm. Just always, I'm always going to side with animals. I read somewhere I'm you, an animal. I, I like other animals. <laughs> I read somewhere <laughs> that you, when, when you were in high school, had a pet rat. Is that true? I had true? a pet rat. I had two pet mice. Actually, I actually had two rats, two mice. Um, yeah. Didn't you used to bring the rat to school? I did. What was that like? I used to wear those button-down boy shirts with the one pocket, and my little rat Ziggy would sit in the pocket. And he would come out at lunchtime for nibbles. Rats are really, people think it's, some people think it's gross, but they're the best pets. They're so fantastic. And they're so sweet. But they will get in your vents and disappear for days. They just disappear after that? Yeah. They go, they go hunting. They need their freedom too. One of the things that was always really interesting to me about your career, especially uh, when you first came out, was, I mean, you weren't like any of the other women that were on TV, certainly not necessarily in music. And I wonder whether there was a learning curve for kind of, you know, learning how to, I guess, be yourself in terms of that growing up. No, I just basically pissed a lot of people off. Where does that come from, though? Where does that, that kind of attitude come from with you? I think my dad, number one, he raised me to be true to myself. And... I watched him growing up. Everyone called him Mr. Cause. He was always fighting for something. Right. And I just think it's much more rewarding to kind of be your own person. I actually like it when people are afraid of me. I used to, when I was a teenager, like walk into a room and people would be like, ah, oh, pink, green hair. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> so it works for me. I don't know. There's something in me that, that gem and the holograms. Maybe that's where it all comes from. Perhaps. Why not? Love Gem and the Holograms. And, Very and precise Transformers. Comment. Yeah. Um, what's the best life lesson your dad's taught you? My best life lesson is um, never judge the fight in a man by his size. 
Is your dad a small guy? No, my dad's a big guy, but I usually pick on bigger people. My dogs actually go for the bigger dogs, too, in dog parks. Do they? <laughs> How many dogs do you have now? Right now, I have three. Okay. I love them. Plans for getting more? I have, I have room, but I'm not on the road, so when I come home, I'll, I'll fill those vacancies okay. with more rescues. We've got another text question. Okay. If you're ready. Uh, ready? It is from uh, Stephanie in Halifax. She wants to know, what is something you would like to accomplish in your music career that you haven't had a chance to accomplish yet? Um, did you say double album? <laughs> Oh, a metal album. Death metal? Death metal opera, maybe? Um, I don't... Are you goal-oriented in terms of uh, your career? I just want to keep going. I just want to make it feel yummy all the time. Well, to me, that seems like a goal in and of itself with the current state of the music industry. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I don't... I never make any plans. They never really work out. Have you thought about what, you know, maybe a time when you won't want to be doing music will look like? Yeah, absolutely. I'll always be doing the music, but I picture like the animal. Oh, monkey! What's the matter? Oh. Because the hungry. pace, the, the the pace of which this life goes, being a pop star, you can't keep it up forever, or you no, start to go I crazy. No, I want to be in a pair of. I can't say it on television. Why? Sorry. Just say it. It's Canadian television. Really? Well, I, I don't know. All right. I want silver hair. Okay. I want to have one a long, flowy hippie dress and a pair of fuck me heels. CRTC, you can divert all your emails. <laughs> to me, I just got permission. To pink. <laughs> or to me, I'll take that. And I want to grow grapes and stomp them in my heels. Okay. Not barefoot? No. Those are nice, those are nice shoes. Everything looks better in heels. They look good. They look good. We've got an audience question from Johnny, my friend. I have three words for you. I love you. Thank and you. And my question to you is, you. out of all the advice that LA Reid's given to you over your career, what is the one thing that you still take um, his advice from? And what is the one that you still, to this day, do or no, do not do? Um, L.A. told me not to let other people rob me of my enjoyment of things. He said that when you're in this business or any, in anything, that we forget to be present and like really taste what's going on at the moment. We're always looking towards the future. When it gets really good, it never really gets there. You got to kind of own it and don't let somebody take it from you. I, I live that way and also I will never ever ever do anything else that he tells me. Yeah. Damn didn't, it. Didn't at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning of, of your career, I mean you talked about it in one of your songs, didn't they completely yes. want to change your image? Didn't he try to completely well, change no, your image? No, they wanted me to take media coaching and uh, etiquette training and I thought that the etiquette training was like an insult to my mother. Did they really? Oh, really? Yes, absolutely. And I tried the media coaching, and the guy got up and left. Really? He was like, wouldn't you rather... No, but he was like, wouldn't you rather um, answer it like this? And I was like, well, no. If I'm trying to say screw you, why would I just say screw you? Like, well, why, why say it? Well, eventually, maybe one day, someone will may, maybe say to you, screw you. Wouldn't be me, of course. Screw that. What is the process of censoring artists in terms of uh, w with record labels? I think when you're in business, you try to skirt that medium so you don't piss off the right and piss off the left. You can kind of get everybody and it's better for business. My thing is that I'm not really in this for business. I'm in this to see how far I can take myself and see how far I can do... I don't know. I don't really. It's good advice for upcoming artists. We've got Absolutely. tons more music on the way. It's a lot of much big. Stay tuned.